Welcome today as we gather to worship and to rejoice in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we begin, we do so in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I share with you our first reading from Psalm chapter 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord Bless his people with peace. Alleluia. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia.
At this time, we join our voices together as we confess our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I thereby forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, beginning in chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together, there were about twelve of them. This ends the reading. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light. Offered gifts most 
This week we're beginning a new sermon series. We are looking at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And as we get started, I want to share a portion of the sermon with you. I want to share with you from Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. It says this, When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's our reading for today. As we begin our sermon, let's begin with a prayer. Merciful God, as we begin this journey through the Sermon on the Mount, I ask that you would bless us and guide us through this teaching. Help us to experience it as did those disciples who first gathered. And Lord, use me to proclaim this message to your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you noticed that we can learn a lot from children? We can learn a lot, in fact, about life from them. Like, for example, children teach us to be spontaneous. Now, if you're like me, you're a planner, and the idea of being spontaneous can be good at times. And children teach us to keep an open mind. Uh, we could probably all use a good dose of an open mind right about now. And children also teach us that exercise can be fun if we call it playtime. I suggest a rebranding of exercise to just call it playtime. In fact, that might make it easier for us all. And children also teach us that when things go wrong, we should just laugh and move on. Again, not easy for us once we grow up. And children teach us also to start every day with energy and enthusiasm as opposed to dragging ourselves out of bed each morning. And this last one I like the best. Children teach us never to let a lack of qualifications stop us. Today we're turning our attention to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is found in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Our reading is from Matthew 5, and so we are at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And from this beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, it's immediately apparent that we learn a lot about Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. So today what I want to do is look at what we learn about Jesus from his sermon. The first thing we learn about Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount is that Jesus came to teach. He came as a teacher. Look again at Matthew 5, the very beginning, verses 1 and 2. And I want you to pay especially close attention to this as I read it again. And when he saw the multitudes, he came up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and opening his mouth, he began to teach them. There are a few things to notice in this verse. I want you to first notice Jesus' actions. In my mind, he seems, well, almost deliberate. Right? Jesus sees the, the multitudes, the crowds of people, and then he decides to go up this mountainside where he took a seat. I can't help but picture these actions happening slowly. 
with purpose. The disciples who must have been keeping a sharp eye on Jesus couldn't help but notice that he had gone up there. And so they followed after him. It's almost as though Jesus was putting out a call to them, pulling them away from the crowds to teach them. I want you to also notice the setting. And as you're thinking about the setting, I want you to think about if you have a place that you go to when you want to be alone. And if you have such a place, I want you to think about if it's isolated or quiet. Is it somewhere where you hope not to be distracted? There's a spot along the Sea of Galilee where many believe the Sermon on the Mount took place. What's interesting about this location is that it's close to the town of Capernaum. In fact, Capernaum can be seen just in the near distance. And here's a point I, I want to make. When, when Jesus went up the mountain, it wasn't like he was trying to escape all of the people, all of the crowds, find a secluded spot, sort of like uh, maybe you'd imagine a monk would go to a monastery to be alone and in seclusion and to focus and reflect. The mountain was a place where Jesus could see and be seen. The setting is a reminder that Jesus came to bring a message of good news to the world, not to be disconnected from the world. And the other thing I want you to notice about this uh, first couple verses is Jesus' purpose here. The Sermon on the Mount comes early in the Gospel of Matthew. It's placed near the beginning to let us know that, that teaching is an essential part of Jesus' mission. It's also letting us know that being a disciple means that Jesus calls us to be students and to be learners. So from the Sermon on the Mount, we learn that Jesus came to teach. He came to teach. The other thing we learn from the Sermon on the Mount is that Jesus came to bless. He came to bring blessing with him. I was hunting around on the internet and I came across a list of interesting facts to know. It was just simply interesting facts to know. And I began to look at it and I thought these were really amazing. So I thought I'd share a few of them with you today. Uh, the first of these, you'll kind of see where they're going as soon as you hear this first one. Uh, the first of these interesting facts to know is that banging your head against a wall for one hour burns 150 calories. So if you're banging your head against the wall, know that it's for a purpose to burn calories. This second one I thought was really interesting. It says, in Switzerland, it is illegal to own just one guinea pig. I had no idea about this. Uh, but evidently, they're considered social animals, and owning one is considered cruel. Thankfully, I own none personally, uh, so I'm well within the limits of the law. How about this one? Snakes can help predict earthquakes. I did not realize this, but evidently they can sense an earthquake from 75 miles away up to five days before it would happen. Here's one that I'm not surprised by. It says 7% of American adults believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Um, I, and that surprised me, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Here's another one that I thought was interesting and I, it surprised me also. The American Public Power Association, the APPA, evidently is their abbreviation, says that squirrels are the most frequent cause of power outages in the United States. Here's a banana fact. If you like bananas, bananas are curved because they grow towards the sun. Here's one last interesting fact for you today. Movie trailers were originally shown after the movie, which is why they were called trailers. I never realized that, but uh, there you go. 
As Jesus addressed the disciples, his first word was blessed. That's the first word he speaks. So verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He then went on to use the word blessed eight more times in quick succession. This portion of the Sermon on the Mount is often called the Beatitudes. The reason for this is because the word for blessed in Latin is beatus. And of course the Bible was translated into Latin very early on. And so this word soon was applied to this portion of the Gospel of Matthew. What I think is interesting about these Beatitudes or blessed statements is that the first thing Jesus shared was uh, with his disciples is this idea that they were blessed. He specifically wanted them to hear these statements on the front end of his work. And that, of course, leaves us with the question of why. The why is because Jesus wanted them to know one simple thing that they themselves were blessed. They had to first know that God's blessing was upon them before they could understand what was to come. For the disciples, being blessed didn't mean that life was immediately perfect, but it did mean that God was with them in the less than perfect times. The same is true for us, too. God's blessing doesn't mean that we won't face challenges or struggles, but it does mean that God is with us. These Beatitudes show us that God is most profoundly with us through the Son, through Jesus. The rest of Matthew's Gospel goes on to describe what Jesus does to bring God's blessing to the world, and more specifically, to you. May the Lord strengthen you with the knowledge that you are blessed through Jesus. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, creator of all things and giver of life, we are blessed, not only today, but always through Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in this good news Strengthen us as we follow Jesus and see what it means to be blessed and how he brings these blessings to us through the cross. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Guided by Christ, 
made known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and through the care of faithful stewards. For the nations of the world and their leaders, especially ours, Lord, at this unique and difficult time, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspires all people to use their strength wisely. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer or are in sickness, especially this morning we lift into your care Linda Tremaine as she continues to recover from a fall, for Sherry Mink as she recovers from surgery and her husband as well, or that you be with them both, for Mary Kay, or that she would have a successful graft and Lord for her husband as he cares for. Kristen Morundi in a successful knee surgery. For Marlene, Lord. For Diane, the daughter of Betty and Dave Dickerman, that you continue to strengthen her, that she may be able to receive a lung transplant. For Bev Smith, as she prepares for surgery from a blockage in her leg. And Lord, this morning, for Pastor Tom, as he makes a transition into living an inspired living. Lord, for all of those and those that are battling COVID-19 right now, those that are recovering, those that are awaiting vaccines, those that are awaiting surgeries that we lift into your care, that there may be a quick end to this pandemic, and Lord, that we may glorify you at its close. For the congregation gathered here, for students returning to school this semester, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Lord, for our community and for our nation specifically, that you might let division cease, Lord, and that you would let order be restored. Lord, that your justice would prevail. Lord, that leaders from our states and our federal government would make wise decisions and ones that show your common grace. For all of those that work in public spaces locally, Lord, that you would be with them for our frontline workers, for those that work in health care, for our teachers and daycare staff, that you would provide safety, Lord, and security, both financial and emotional, for those serving in the military, abroad and at home, for our National Guard at this time, Lord, we lift into your care, for those that continue to travel, that you would provide safe travels, and Lord, safety from illness. Lord, for our, our local churches, that you would give them wisdom to speak at this time in a way that glorifies you, and Lord, in a way that points towards the cross and the good news of the gospel, for our missionaries, both local and abroad. For our churches, we pray through and reflect on ways in which we can minister to our local communities through new mission starts or through new creative ministries or that you would bless them and lord that you would place in our hearts a strong desire to just make your name known and proclaim your word faithfully for the faithful departed who now rest for their labors that their witness inspires us in their baptismal vocation lord for all of those we lift up we ask that you hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
go today with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.